Maybe we should wait for that. Then you are half. Sayara? We can have questions after he has made the presentation. I think let's have the second presentation also, then you have discussion now. Then we can maybe we can start. The tea will come in. Uh, no, he's going there. Yeah. Is yeah. No, on uh, uh, how much she time you need? Uh, I'll be quick, sir. I'll try to be. <laughs> Like this? It's, it's not easy to speak after uh, uh, but use the use the mic there. I'll uh, Professor Bridge Gopal. I consider him as my guru because when when we started trying to do investigate understand what. Uh, a river system is. He was one of the first persons that I went to, and he was very, very uh, open with suggestions and literature and whatnot. So <clears throat> now uh, you have you have just just heard uh, a very academic introduction to uh, what rivers are, and uh, and of course little bit about the. River Yamuna, I will be focusing a uh, little bit again on the rivers, but not, not in any uh, degree of detail that Professor Gopal has done because I do not have that kind of uh, uh, scholarship. Uh, but uh, then how we have experienced the river over last four and a half years, that is what I would like to suggest. And then, of course, certain observations and suggestions, because we think that uh, this is a river which is still, uh, which can be restored back to health. It's a very interesting uh, uh, title, Living Rivers and Dying Rivers. And you can see two examples. On the left, this is Chambal, which we think is still a, a living river. and. Uh, this this is uh, from the same system where a female gharial is carrying uh, the hatchlings uh, on it and this is panipat this is yamuna at panipat uh, which uh, indicates what a dead river would look look like next now most debates around rivers uh, till now have been either for or against a dam, or how to clean a river system. The, most of the things have been actually uh, uh, revolving around these, these two things only. That a river is a unique and exceptional ecological entity. I think I, I don't need to elaborate it anymore after what Professor Bridge Gopal has already done. Next. Just just few points. Why we, we think that you, uh, river system is unique and exceptional. There is no other ecosystem like a river system because it flows unidirectionally along a gradient. No other ecosystem on earth does that. It continually is in a flux because every day it is a different river that you see. It is created by and creates its own physical environment. It creates its biological endowments. It completes the water cycle, as Professor has already said. And then it has got immense self-cleansing abilities. Next. And then uh, what we can observe, there is a surface flow, there is a subsurface flow, which of course we can't see, but which exists. River feeds the aquifers, that is the ground, it recharges the ground. And in the lean, lean period, the aquifers feed the river. It is, so there is a, what we call as effluent action and there is an influent action. And this we observed firsthand as a result of the last floods in 2010, when a river that we found absolutely dead in 2009 was still flowing in 2010, in peak summer. So it was, it was the, the result of that flood which had 
initially the affluent action and then it was the influent action. And then of course in India we have got very specific lean period for our rivers. And the health of the river during the lean period is actually important. That is what is the key to its rest restoration because that is what we need to really. And floods we believe are as natural as, as, a, as a cold wave wave in a winter time or a heat wave in a summer time. That is how floods have to be actually looked at. Next. Then Professor Saab has, has, has given a, a different uh, uh, view why he considers ri a river to be living. Now this is again we think that river is living but it is a slightly different view. River is li living like us. We have prana as long as that force is inside we live. Once the prana is gone, we are dead. Similarly, river has a, has a force, which is gravity. And the gravity never leaves. So there is always a, a possibility that a river can be revived. So, but a river can die like us. Now, these are the various agents of death for a river. And the first agent I would like to draw your attention to, the callous state agencies and the authorities. I think that is the first agent of death for a river system. Because there is no concerted effort for the river. It is always ad hoc. It is always, OK, do this here and do, the, do, do it there. And then, of course, there is a whole list which I need not get into because professors have already spoken about it. Fortunately, unlike us, rivers can be restored, almost from a state of almost death. Next. And what is a river? River is a report card. This has been explained very well by the professor, sir. It is a report card of its watershed. How healthy the watershed is, the river will be healthy. How sick the watershed is, the river will be sick. Next. So let me take you along this journey of 1,400 kilometer. It's a 1,400 kilometer long river. Let me take you, so present some kind of a report card of the basin. Next. Look at this very interesting basin of the Yamuna. And if you compare it with Ganga, the founder basin of Yamuna is so very small. It is just three, three different rivers, so very small. Whereas the founder basin of Ganga, so very huge. And then, you, you have this chicken neck in the basin. Mind it, this is a chicken neck. And the chicken neck means there is no tributary worth, worth notice. Because only then a chicken neck basin can exist. Because if there is a, if there is a not noticeable tributary, then it will not be a chicken neck. So when we have a chicken neck in a basin, we have to be extremely careful what we are doing to that river there because there is no fresh water coming. And this is unfortunately the, the most threatened part of this river. That is the most unfortunate aspect because all the big cities, Delhi, Matra, Agra, they are all in the chicken neck. And then if you include the basin of Chambal, then you have a huge basin. So it's a it's some kind of uh, where, as, as Professor Bridge Gopal just showed you, that here at Alaba, when Yamuna meets Ganga, Yamuna is a major river. And it is not just now. It has always been. Yamuna has brought far more water at Alaba than Ganga has, just because of these uh, tributaries. Next. Now, our understanding of the river is based on these 14 sites that we have been working on for last three years. All along the river, thanks to a, a grant from UNDP GEF, small grant, we have, we have been working with local people all along these 14 sites uh, uh, along the river. Next. Yeah, next. 
Now, this picture has been shown to you by Professor Bridge Gopal. Uh, I have personally visited Yamnotri, although not now, not during this phase. So this is not, not a picture taken by me. It's a picture from net. But this is, but Yamna does not start here. Although Yamnotri is considered to be the origin of the Yamna, Yamna actually starts 18 kilometers upstream from a small uh, lake called as Saptrishi Kund, which is at the bottom of the Bandarpuch Glacier. That is where, and it's a very tough track, and the people who have done it, they say, next. Now, 40 kilometers downstream is a place called as Karadi, next. This is, this is where Karadi, Karadi is. This is, you can see the Bandapuch. Uh, this is the, the Kalind, Kalind range. And this is how the river is flowing. And this is the state of the river at Karadi. Uh, this is a village called as Kishala. And this is Karadi. And this is the state of the river. Next. Now, the same river, which is wonderful, beautiful, is about to actually being imprisoned. There is a ROR, run of the river scheme, which is under construction, which will carry the entire river into something like this, about three kilometer downstream, and there it would get into a powerhouse. And five megawatt is what they what they plan to produce. They started with eight me megawatt. Which this is a reg Regency Power Group of Himachal Pradesh. They started, they got uh, permission for 8 megawatt, but later on they found there wasn't enough water. So they have already reduced it to 5 megawatt. But for 3 kilometers, there would be no river, because obviously they will need every drop of this water to even justify 5 megawatt. Next. And for that 5 megawatt, they have gone seeking carbon credits under the CDM, clean development mechanism, they have gone to seek carbon credits and on lies, based on lies. Because when this first went to the agency, uh, UNFCC, and uh, because, because of the transparency, they put it everything on the, on the site, we asked this group, you claim that you have done public hearing, please provide us the minutes. And the minutes never came because the public hearing had never been done. It, was, it had just been made. A, and when the, we, we wrote to the UNFCC saying that, okay, we, this is the email through which we asked them for the public hearing minutes and nothing has come to us. Next. 100 kilometers downstream of Yamnotri. Next. Is Katapattar. This is the state of the river there. It's still uh, uh, safe. These are the kind of Nalas that feed, still feed the river, but there is a, uh, you can't read it, this is Vyasi. Uh, Lakwar Vyasi project is coming up right on the uh, river here. This is uh, uh, in the process. Next. And there is also a barrage. Go back. There is, go back. Yeah, there is also a barrage which is planned here at Katapattar. Next. Next. Yeah, I am I'm, I'm using this slide again. This actually wonderful picture of the upper Yamna uh, catchment has been prepared by Sendak, South Asia Network for uh, Dam, River and People, Himanshu Thakkarji. I am surprised he is not here. Uh, this is a, a wonderful at a glance picture. And when I showed this picture to Secretary MOEF now, and please, it's not aspersion or any, anyone. But it's only how decisions are made in, in, in ignorance. When I showed this picture to Shri Chatterjee, and then he realized for the first time that the so-called Renuka Dam is coming up on a tributary of this river. Till that time, he was not appreciative of this fact that the river Giri, on which Renuka Dam is being constructed, to feed water to Delhi, which Delhi doesn't really need, is on a tributary of Yamna, which Yamna is in any case bringing to Delhi. Anyway, now, 
you, uh, professors have referred to it. This is a very beautiful picture. This is Yamnotri. Yamna is coming like this. And here it meets uh, tones. And look at tones. Tones is, has got much bigger basin than initial basin of Yamna. Yamna has three major tributaries. Tones, which meets it here. And then there is Asan, which comes from here, from the Masuri Hills. And then there is Giri Bata combined, which comes from Himachal and meets it here. These are, this is entire basin, founder basin of Yamuna. And look at, look at all these planned hydroelectric projects. Now, I'll, I'll bring, I'll, I'll, I, I, I wish to bring your attention to this point. Now, these black ones are existing. These black ones have already been constructed. This blue one is under construction. And then reds are all planned. Next. Now, dam on river tones at Ichari, powerhouse at Chibru and at Khodri. It was commissioned in 1975, uh, the dam. Uh, Chibru, 1975, and Khodri, 1984. These are the powerhouses. Next. Now, look at this. This is the dam, and this is the state, this is the reservoir which has been created as a result of the dam. And go to next. And you see, this is, this is the dam, and this is Dark Pathar Barrage. From here, there is a tunnel which comes like this and comes out here. And the original river, which is this, is dried. Because this tunnel from here is bringing the entire water at this point. There is a there is a, uh, after 6.5 kilometer, there is the one power powerhouse, and then another 6 kilometer, there is this powerhouse at Khodri. So it's a 12.5 kilometer long tunnel uh, crossing these hills, and it's about 30 kilometer of the river which has been compromised. Next. Now, come to the barrage at Dark Pathar. Next. This is the barrage at Dark Pathar. This is Khodri, this, this is uh, Tones water, this is the Yamna water, and the Tones actually meets it somewhere here. And from here, this is the, uh, this is a canal, which is called as Shakti Canal, which takes away the entire river Yamna water uh, for power generation. Next. And as you can see, there is hardly any water left. Now, these are the pictures. This is Tones meeting Yamna. Yamna is coming like this. Tones is, and you can see there is hardly any water left in Tones. Why? Because this is, this is the water of Tones. This is Khodri. So that Tones, which should actually flowed like this, is now flowing like this. And this is the downstream of uh, uh, Dark Pathar. And this is dry. Why? Because the entire river, and this, this water is Yamna water as well as Tones water. Yamna plus Tones is now flowing in a canal like this. And after this, there is no Yamna really. Next. Now, this is the Asan. So that Shakti canal comes like this. There is another uh, powerhouse here. And then Shak this Shakti canal falls into this barrage. So there is Asan water and the Yamna water and the Tones water. So the Yamna water, Tones water, and Asan water is blocked again at Asan Baraj. And then there is another canal which takes away the water from here for another two powerhouses. Next. Now, Hatri Kund, which was previously Tajewala, this is as soon as the river enters the plains. It is built by Haryana with, of course, World Bank assistance. Who else? on the Haryana-UP border, 172 kilometers from Yamnotri. Next. This is, this is Atnikun. This is the Asan Canal bringing the original water of Yamuna, Tones, and Asan into Atnikun Barrage. And then this, this water that you are seeing 
is water brought by Bata and Giri. Giri. And here, then the Western Yamuna Canal actually comes out from here, and the Eastern Yamuna Canal comes out from here. Hardly anything is left. Haryana government claims that they leave 160 cusack downstream, but that is also debatable because when people went, there was a committee which was formed by government of India, and they went there to inspect whether 160 cusack is also released or not. They were told by the villagers that this water was released two days back. Okay, now this takes away 99% of the river. And just to show you, uh, uh, this is Tajewala. This which was constructed in 1872. And you can see the Tajewala barrage and compare it with Hatnikun barrage. And you can see the difference, how much, how much it has changed. Tajewala could never have actually really impounded the um, kind of water that now Hatni Kun Baraj can. And the result is, next, next, this is, this is just, go back, go back. 